Hello YouTube, it's Barbara Jean. <clears throat> I'm just trying to straighten out my thoughts here. <laughs> um, I know I have a message this week. I know the Lord has me. I have several things on my mind, but trying to sort them all out. Just that's the problem. The Lord is. This is why I think He's doing all this brain surgery, is actually to straighten out my thoughts because the thought will come in, but I think then I start thinking, well, how do I? How do I put that together with this and this and this? And then the Lord just keeps working on my brain until it actually starts to come together and it makes more sense. Um, so at this moment, I'm going to talk a little bit about lying signs and wonders. Um, this is a deception that right from the beginning, we think that this is was, was reserved for the um, end times. Well, yes, it is partly reserved for the end times, but lying signs and wonders have been something that Satan has been working on <laughs> since the beginning. He has been working on lying signs and wonders, lies and deceptions. So um, I just want to actually read 2 Thessalonians. Um, let's just go through that a little bit, and then I want to go to uh, the book of Exodus. Um 2 Thessalonians 2, 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there, be, there come a following away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Oh, by the way, I just, I'm just i going to stop and start here a little bit. I was looking at this up here. Um, and let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. Uh, they're referring to, of course, the day of the Lord. Um, the day of Christ. The day of Christ, that is actually ref a reference to uh, the second coming of Christ, which is not the rapture. The, the day of the Lord is when the Lord comes back to the earth and lands on the Mount of of, of um, the Mount of uh, Olives, okay? And that's when he takes back the world. He reclaims the world from Satan. Um, so therefore, uh, this day of the Lord, shaken in mind neither by spirit nor by word or letters from us that the day of the Lord is at hand. So <laughs> Paul is referring to the after-tribulation return of Christ. He's not referring to um, the day of rapture. Uh, and that let, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. I was looking up in the extend the uh, King James Version Strong's numbers when they they expanded, of course, and you see the the Greek letters. That day of the Lord shall not come is actually added. I don't know whether that really mean, makes any difference in this verse, except that that is added there. Just let you know. There's a, there's when you start to look at these things, you start to see these added words. It really sometimes changes the meanings of the text, as I'll, sh I'll show you in a second here. But anyway, let no man deceive you by any means, except they're coming out, falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So he's saying is that, that when Christ returns to the earth here, will not happen until the son, of, the son of perdition is revealed, the great falling away happens, but does not indicate that this is referring to the rapture. This is not referring to the rapture. So Paul is saying, let no man deceive you that the second coming of Christ is at hand because first has to happen these certain things. So a lot of people use that verse to indicate that the rapture won't happen until after the great falling away, until after the son of uh, the, the Antichrist is revealed. That's not what that verse means. That is referring to the second coming of Christ to the earth, not the rapture. Okay, it makes a big difference. <laughs> don't be deceived. Don't be don't be deceived. Don't let anybody shake you in, in mind that Christ comes after the falling away. Uh, the, the, the return of Christ to the earth is after the falling away and the revealing of the Antichrist. But it's not this is not talking about the rapture of the church. OK, so that, that's just to tell you the way you interpret something makes a big difference. <clears throat> so this is referring to the, the uh, second coming, who opposes, this is verse 4, he who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or is, or is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye uh, not that when, I, that when I was with you I told you these things? And now you know what holdeth that he might be revealed in his time. <clears throat> 
For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let. Will let is actually um, added. But he who now letteth until he is taken out of the way. Um, so it's saying that there is something restraining um, the re re revelation of the Antichrist. And that re revelation of the Antichrist doesn't come until that which is he who is, is allowing uh, or, re or is repressing the re revelation of this Antichrist will not um, will not be allowed he will not allow the Antichrist to be revealed until he is removed this he I believe is referring to Jesus Christ why do I say that because we heard his body we as his body will be removed he will remove himself his 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 church his bride himself from the earth including I think the presence of the Holy Spirit because we are the the um, um, uh, vessels of the Holy Spirit, we are indwelled and we are filled with the Holy Spirit at our baptism. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and be uh, repent every last of every one of you for the remission of your sin, and you shall receive the gift and be baptized, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So we are the vessels of the Holy Spirit. The Lord, we are His body, we are His bride. He is uh, allowing this, according to this verse, He's allowing. Uh, or, or he's repressing the revelation of the Antichrist. He's repressing it until he removes himself. This word here is actually um, uh, um, until he be taken out of the way. Uh, so that's a, uh, 2 Thessalonians 2.7. Uh, let's just look that up here. That, that word uh, is taken out of, removed. It's the same word, ek, ek, or e x, um, it means to be snatched or removed from one place to another. So um, this is the same word that's used in the, the book of Revelation in regards to the Church of Philadelphia. It's the same word. It says, "I will remove you from the hour of tribulation. I will take you out of ek, take you from this place and move you to another place." So this is the same word that's used here. So I believe that this is referring to uh, that the Antichrist cannot be revealed until the church is removed out of its way. So this is uh, um, a verse I think that's kind of important because it confuses a lot of people. The day of the Lord it refers to the time when Christ comes back to the earth after the tribulation, when he defeats Satan once and for all. But he, um, he's repressing the revelation of the, of the Antichrist, the son of perdition, until he's fully uh, um, exposed and the great falling away will not happen until Christ removes his bride, he removes his bride. That's, it's, it's an amazing thing. So when you read something a little differently, when you see how it's actually supposed to be interpreted, removes the confusion. Okay. So Paul is telling the, the Thessalonians, don't to be, don't be worried or fearful of seeing the Antichrist because you're not going to be seeing, you're not going to be here to see it. You will be removed from that time, from that hour of tribulation, and that the um, Christ is the one who's repressing the revelation of the wicked one. Okay, uh, let's, so let's just read that again. <clears throat> Remember, um, this is verse five. <clears throat> Remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things, and now you know that what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now lets until he is taken out of the way, then shall, then shall the wicked be revealed. Okay, so Christ has to remove his church before the wicked one can be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy it with the brightness of his coming. Even him, again that was added, even him, whose coming is after the work of Satan with all power and power and signs and lying wonders. Now that's the really the verse I want to get to. I'll get to that in a few moments. Um, who's who is coming after the working of Satan with all power, power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. For this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and the belief of the truth, wherein he called you by our gospel to obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I just wanted um, a, little, a little footnote here. I looked up this um, 
verse 14, wherein he called you by our gospel to obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, this, this pronoun, he, was added, and it makes it sound like the Holy Spirit is a he, but that is actually um, added, where the verse actually should read, whereunto you were called by our gospel to obtain, to obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So let's read the first 13 again. And 14, by, but we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, because of beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth, wherein you were called by the our gospel to obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's actually how it should be read. OK, so like I said, these little words that are added here and there just to deceive the mind, to brainwash us into thinking one thing when actually it means another or something else. Um, so there's all these little lies and, and deceptions that Satan has, you know, um, corrupted the scriptures. Um, the only one he hasn't corrupted uh, is the, actually the book of Revelation. And because, why? Because that, that warning in the book of Revelation, and anybody tampers with this book in any way, shape, or form will be, will be damned for sure. It's a very, very strong warning. And I think that's the only reason why he has not, Satan has not tampered with that book at all. Um, so we've all, all of us have been brainwashed into these little, little lies and deceptions. Like, like I said, for instance, this, this whole chapter is saying that the church has to be removed before the wicked one can be actually revealed. But the way it's worded makes us believe that that day shall not come. Well, in other words, the rapture, the removing of the church won't happen until the wicked one is revealed. <laughs> you see, see, but when you read it another way, when you actually read it the way it's, it was interpreted or actually should be interpreted, it says that we won't be here to see the wicked one revealed, okay? That there will be a great falling away um, and the wicked one will be revealed, but the church won't be here because we will be removed, okay? So there, it's interesting the way this, this all is. Now let's just continue. Um, uh, let's just finish reading at the, the end of the chapter here. <clears throat> uh, Whereunto you were called by our gospel to obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren... Stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or by our epistle. Now, now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and given us uh, everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good work, word and work. So that's the comfort of this, of this chapter. Because when you read it the other way, there's not much comfort in that knowing we're going to be here to see the revelation of the Antichrist and the great falling away, oh my goodness, that doesn't sound very comforting. It isn't very comforting. The way it's worded, the way we've been told it actually means, but actually when you read it the way it's supposed to mean, and you understand that the great day of the Lord is the return of Jesus Christ to the earth and not the rapture of the church, then you can understand, hey, this is comforting. We won't be here to see the revelation of the wicked one. We won't be here. We will be removed. We, he who now led us, he who restrains, he, Jesus Christ is the one who's restraining the revelation until he's removed. He removes his bride, his church. Okay. Now, uh, what I really want to get to is the lying signs and wonders part uh, here. Uh, let no man deceive you. Um, all the way through, there's um, down here, and all lying wonders, signs and wonders. Um... Uh, who is coming after the, so Satan is coming, uh, the Antichrist is coming with all lying signs and wonders. Uh, verse, verse 9, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. So we won't be here to see the lying signs and wonders, those who were left behind because they didn't love the truth and therefore weren't removed from the, the <laughs> this tribulation time. They will be deceived by the lying signs and wonders. What are the lying signs and wonders, you ask? Well, that is... Um, um, the lying signs and wonders are the same lying, lying signs and wonders that Satan has done all, the, all along. He has, Satan has always done his best to try to imitate God. When God does a thing, Satan does his best to imitate it or to counterfeit it. Um, let's go to the book of Exodus here. Um, where was I now? Exodus, oh, I wrote it down. Exodus chapter 7. And I just want to point something out here. Um... 
So Moses goes to back to Egypt and he, uh, uh, the command of the Lord to confront Pharaoh and uh, to get his people released from e the bondage in Egypt. And Pharaoh is not too happy about that. And um, uh, let's see. Let's just go to. Uh, and let's go to verse verse nine. Uh, verse nine. When Pharaoh shall speak, saying, uh, speak unto you, saying, Show a miracle for you, then thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. And Moses and Aaron went into, unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before the servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called his wise men and sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt. They also did in like manner with enchantments. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became a serpent. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. And he hardened Pharaoh's heart, that he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refuses to let the people go. Go Get ye into Pharaoh, uh, unto Pharaoh in the morning. Lo, he goeth out unto the water, and thou shalt stand by the river, river's brink against he, against he come, and, and the rod which was turned to a serpent shall thou take in thy hand. So this is um, where um, he turns the water to blood. And I want you to see what happens after he turns the water to blood. It says, um, and this goes down to verse 21, and the, and the fish that was in the river died and the river stank and the Egyptians could not drink up the water of the river. And there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt, and the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened, neither did he hearken unto them as the Lord had said. So this, this is an example of what had happened, was that the Lord would do something, and then Pharaoh would come along and imitate it, counterfeit it, uh, with his uh, lying signs and wonders. Why is this important? Why am I bringing this up? This is important because, as we read in that that first in First Second Thessalonians, there will be lying signs and wonders after the rapture of the church, before the great day of the Lord. That many, all who who were not saved in the rapture, will not all, but many who who were not saved because of their hardened hearts, um, and did not believe the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ and His word that He would come for His people, um, were going to be deceived by the lying signs and wonders. And this is what happened here in Egypt. Um, Moses would come along with a, a miracle and, and Pharaoh had his magicians counterfeit it to follow suit, to make a, a lying sign and wonder. Only God always consumed Pharaoh's um, um, objection, uh, um, obje object, which was to counterfeit God, but God would always one up him. <laughs> and he kept wanting upping him, and wanting up him, wanting up him, until finally he gets to the point where Satan cannot counterfeit him at all. Like making fire come down from heaven, um, inhale um, on the ground. So there's all sorts of things that Satan, Satan's always trying to counterfeit God until actually he's consumed. And this is what's going to happen, is that when the church is removed, Satan's already preparing. You, you know, Satan. Satan may be. <laughs> Satan may may be uh, uh, stupid, but he's not an idiot. <laughs> Try to understand what I'm saying. Um, he's already preparing. Satan knows how to count days. Satan knows that the days of of the rapture are nearing. He's getting desperate. So what is he doing? He's preparing. He's preparing his lying signs and wonders. Um, I was thinking about the chemtrails. What are they for? Well, they're a gigantic um, uh, silver screen. <laughs> they're filling the air with metals so that when the time comes, when the rapture happens, he's already got his lying counterfeit already already there. He's going to have this fake um, alien invasion thing getting ready to happen. It's, it's already prepared, already in the works. Um, he's already got, <clears throat> he's filling, uh, oh, chemtrails. <clears throat> 
I was thinking about how chemtrails actually fill us with all this heavy metal. What is that purpose? What is the purpose of all these vaccines? Well, it's the first one thing is to shut off our brain so we can't actually think, <laughs> so we can't reason. So that when we see these lying signs, well, not a weed, though the church won't be here to see it, but when the world sees these lying signs and wonders, they'll be thinking that they'll be seeing God. So they're filling our bodies with heavy metals. And the reason why I was thinking about this, since I was a young girl, I remember hearing a very loud ringing noise in my ear that would come and go several times a day. Um, <clears throat> and still do. I still hear this ringing, ringing sound in my, in my ear. Only, of course, <clears throat> since the Lord has been working on my brain, that ringing sound is getting few, le less frequent and less loud, which I'm very grateful for. But I used to wonder, what was that ringing sound? Every now and then you'd hear this, I don't know if you hear it, but I do. This, this piercing ringing in the ears. <clears throat> And, some, and <clears throat> when I was younger, it was, used to be very, very loud, so almost deafening. It was so loud. <clears throat> and it would last for maybe a minute, maybe two minutes at most, and then it would go away. <clears throat> and I've been thinking, you know what they were do they're doing with all this fluoride? First of all, they're trying to calcify by our, 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 our gland here, our third eye, so we can... <laughs> he's, he's, trying, he's trying to clog it up so we can't uh, receive messages from the living God. Um, and he's 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 filling our bodies with these heavy metals so that we become living radios or living receptors of 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 these metals so that when he tunes in with the right frequencies think about it people with the right frequencies he'll be able to um go over radio and actually speak into our heads and and make us think that he's god and also those frequencies i believe have something to do with um uh, causing us to, uh, he's trying to read our minds. It's part of reading our minds. Um, cause Satan can't do it, you know, without these, all these extra devices that he has. So he's filling us with all these, these chemicals, altering our food, our air, our water to fill us with these heavy metals in order to put us on a certain frequency so he can control us with these, this voice. And one day when, when he that restrains, when Jesus Christ and his bride is removed from the earth, Satan will use these lying wonders and turn on the, the high frequency radioactive whatever it is and he's got and he's going to speak into it and everyone's going to think, oh, we're hearing the voice of God. After the church, you know, he'll say, oh, I'm God and, <clears throat> and I, I'm here to tell you everything is fine. <clears throat> Those people who were moved out of the, the way, they were just in my way from, uh, from creating world peace, something to that extent. <clears throat> think about it. So Satan is doing the same thing that he did back in the day. <laughs> back in the day of Moses and whenever it was, he, right from the start, he's always had his lying signs and wonder. He's the imitating, counterfeiting God. He's already preparing. He's preparing already for the rapture because he knows it's going to happen. He can't stop it, although he's been trying. <laughs> he can't stop it. So when it happens, he has his lying signs and wonders already in place. He's got his gigantic silver screen so he can deceive the whole world with his blue beam projects. And he's got it all filled with heavy metals so that when he turns on the radio, the right, the right frequency, well, all those who are left behind will hear the lying signs and wonders, all deceivableness, because they did not love the truth. They will believe the lie. So just let you know that this is what's been on my head and in my mind. So um, anyway, I will talk to you in my next video. God bless and have a good day.